Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about EC2 purchasing options. What do we mean by EC2 purchasing options? The purchasing option that you select decides how are you going to get billed or charged for using that EC2 instance. We have six EC2 purchasing options. The first one is on demand, and this is where you pay by the hour. We looked at the first two steps on how to launch an EC2 instance in the last video. If you've not checked that out, I'd highly recommend that you check that out and come back over here. When we launch an instance that way, by using the button called as launch instance, we are basically paying by the hour. The second option is reserved instances, which allows you to purchase at a significant discount for a term of one to three years. With the option called spot instances, you bid on unused instances, which run as long as your bid price is above the spot price. And we'll understand what do we mean by bid price and spot price. We then have scheduled instances. You purchase instances for specific recurring schedules for one year. You have dedicated instances where you pay for instances that run on a single tenant hardware. And then you have dedicated host where you pay for a physical host and you have the option to bring your own license. Let's talk about reserved instances. Reserved instances provide significant discount compared to on-demand pricing. Reserved instances are not physical instances, meaning they're not reserved physically for you, but rather it's a billing discount. So you're actually purchasing for a duration of one or three years, which is why AWS gives you a significant discount. On the EC2 console, on the left-hand side, we have this option over here called Reserved Instances. That's where you purchase your reserved instances. We have this option over here that says Purchase Reserved Instances. You click on that and you make your selections. You start by selecting your platform. You have Linux and Windows platforms. You choose your tenancy, which can be default or dedicated. We'll talk about this. And then you have an offering class which can be standard or convertible. If you choose the option called standard, you cannot make any changes once you've made your purchase. The only change that you can make is the size of the instance. But if you choose the option called convertible, you can make changes like the instance size, the instance family, the tenancy, and so on. So that's an important consideration when you're making a purchase. And then you choose your instance type over here, you choose um, the term, which is basically how long do you want to purchase that instance for. You can purchase it for one year or three years. And then you choose your payment option. You can go for no upfront, partial upfront, or all upfront payment. And then you hit search over here, which shows you all items that match your search. You can see that we have a lot of reserved instances available for purchase that match the conditions that we've given. We can add it to the cart and make the purchase over here. Right, so that's how you purchase reserved instances. Next, we have spot instances. Spot instances enable you to bid on unused EC2 instances, which can lower your Amazon EC2 costs significantly. The hourly price for a spot instance is set by Amazon EC2 and fluctuates depending on the supply and demand for spot instances. Your spot instance runs whenever your bid exceeds the current market price. Spot instances are a cost-effective choice if you can be flexible about when your applications run and if your applications can be interrupted. An example could be batch processing jobs. To use spot instances, you make a request that includes the maximum price that you're willing to pay per hour per instance. This price is known as your bid price. You also specify some other constraints like the instance type and the availability zone. If your bid price is greater than the current spot price, which is fixed by AWS for the specified instance, and the specified instance is available, your request is fulfilled immediately. Otherwise, your request is fulfilled whenever the spot price falls below your bid price or the specified instance becomes available. Spot instances run until you terminate them or until Amazon EC2 must stop or terminate them. Amazon EC2 can interrupt your spot instance when the spot price 
rises above your bid price, when the demand for spot instances rises, or when the supply for spot instances decreases. When Amazon EC2 interrupts a spot instance, it provides a spot instance interruption notice, which gives the instance a 2-minute warning before Amazon EC2 stops or terminates it. To request a spot instance, the option is over here. There's an option called Spot Request. You can go there, and we have an option over here called Request Spot Instances. There are three types of requests that we can make. The first one is a one-time spot instance request. The second one is called as Request and Maintain, where you request for a fleet of spot instances and you want to maintain them. The third option is to reserve your spot instances for a duration of 6 hours. You put your desired capacity over here, the AMI that you'd like to use for launching the instances, the instance type, which is basically the size of that instance. The allocation strategy has two options. The lowest price option allows you to launch the instance in the cheapest availability zone, and the diversified option balances your spot instances between availability zones. So you can choose the one that matches your requirements. And you can see that over here, when I click on lowest price, it says launch in the cheapest availability zone. When I click on diversified, it says balance across availability zones. And then for the maximum price, again we have a couple of options. This option allows you to set your bid price. This is the price that you're willing to pay per instance per hour. This option allows for automated bidding. So you're leaving the choice on Amazon to fix the appropriate bid price. This is one way of doing things. The second way is to cancel out from here. And there's an option over here that says Spot Advisor. It provides some recommendations on spot pricing. So I'm going to click on Spot Advisor. It'll first ask you what type of application are you looking for. So for example, I'm going to say Web Service. And then we have to specify the compute requirements. The default value says two virtual CPUs, three gigs of RAM, the platform is Linux, and any availability zone. You click on recommend a fleet, and it will show you a fleet of spot instances. For example, you can see that over here, for M4 large, you're going to be paying $0.0201 per hour, which is significantly lower compared to the actual price of an M4 large instance. I have the pricing page open over here where we can see the on-demand pricing for different instance types. And I'm going to check for M4 large. The region is Mumbai. And if you see that over here, for M4 large, the on-demand pricing is $0.123 per hour. And if you look at the price over here, it is $0.0201 per hour significantly lower. And these are all recommendations given by Amazon EC2 based on the search that we performed over here. And you can see that they're all big instance sizes, M4 large, I3 large, and so on. Collectively, you're only going to be paying $0.521 per hour, which is 87% lower than on-demand pricing. So this is a great option if you have flexibility in terms of when your instance can be running. The next one is scheduled instances. Scheduled instances enable you to purchase capacity reservations that recur on a daily, weekly, or monthly basis with a specified start time and duration for a one-year term. You reserve the capacity in advance so that you know it is available when you need it. You pay for the time that the instances are scheduled even if you do not use them. Scheduled instances are a good choice for workloads that do not run continuously but do run on a regular schedule. For example, applications that run only during business hours. The option for scheduled instances is found under the Instances section over here. But you can see that it's not found over here. That's because I'm in the Mumbai region. In the Mumbai region, you do not have that option. So for scheduled instances, I'm going to change my region. Just drop down and I'm going to select the first one, which is North Virginia. And you'll notice now I have that option for scheduled instances. I'm going to click on that and we have the option that says purchase scheduled instances. You start by providing your start time, the duration for which you need the instances, 
What's your recurring frequency? Do you want to have it daily, weekly, or monthly? What's the platform you're looking for? The instance type and the availability zone over here. And you click on Find Schedules. And we have so many schedule instances that we can purchase. And you can also see the cost of each of those schedule instances. To purchase them, we can say Add to Cart and finish off that purchase. Next up, we have dedicated instances and dedicated hosts. I'm going to first show you where this option is available. Back over here, I'm first going to cancel out of this. The option to cancel is over here. And I'm going to go back to instances. This is where you this is where you actually request your on-demand instances. And I'm going to click on launch instance. I'll select the AMI first. I'll select the instance type as T2 Micro, which is good. And I'm going to click on configure instance details. When we scroll down a little bit, we have this option over here that says tenancy. And when we drop down, we have three options. This one over here is shared tenancy, which means your instances are going to be launched on shared hardware. These options over here allow you to select dedicated instance or dedicated host. Let's now understand what are the differences. Dedicated instances are Amazon EC2 instances that run on hardware that's dedicated to a single customer. Your dedicated instances are physically isolated at the host hardware level from instances that belong to other AWS customers. Talking about dedicated hosts, an Amazon EC2 dedicated host is a physical server with EC2 instance capacity fully dedicated to your use. Dedicated hosts allow you to use your existing per socket, per core, or per VM software licenses, including Windows Server, Microsoft SQL Server, SUSE Linux, Linux Enterprise Server, and so on. This is the definition that you'll find on the AWS website. And as you can see, it's pretty confusing. It's not very really clear what exactly are they trying to say. So what is the difference between dedicated instances and dedicated hosts? Dedicated hosts versus dedicated instances. There are no performance, security, or physical differences. Both the options launch instances on dedicated hardware that is not shared with other customers. But dedicated hosts gives you the visibility into the physical host. With a dedicated host, you have control over how instances are placed on a physical server. This helps you when you want to bring your own license for SQL Server, Windows Server, and so on. So the real difference is in terms of visibility into the physical host. When you choose the option called dedicated host, you can decide on which physical host do you want to launch your EC2 instances. But with dedicated instances, you don't get that visibility. I'll show you what I mean. I'm back over here. I'm going to cancel out. And there's an option over here that says dedicated host. When you want to start using dedicated host, we first need to allocate a dedicated host. So there's an option over here that says allocate a host. We can choose the instance type, the availability zone, and the quantity, and we can say allocate host. This will allocate a dedicated host into my AWS account. After that, when I'm launching an EC2 instance, I have the option to select this dedicated host for my EC2 instances. So I have control on which physical host my EC2 instance will be launched. With dedicated instances, I don't have this visibility. I cannot see where my instance is going to get launched. Even though it's a dedicated hardware for me, but I don't get that visibility into the physical host. That is what is the difference. Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. In the next video, we'll talk about security groups. Security groups are virtual firewalls that you can attach with your EC2 instances. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thank you.